dueling arpeggiators. Uh, if you don't know, an arpeggiator is basically a device that you play a chord and it will take the notes in that chord and kind of cycle through them. It can go up through the chord, down through the chord, up and down. And there's a lot of different things you can set. Which way it goes, you can set how long overall the sequence is that it does, how long the notes within that sequence are, and it can do some other things, adjust the velocities, it can crescendo or decrescendo after each cycle through it. Lots of different little settings you can set on the arpeggiator, um, just for variety. I actually figured out how to use this thing beginning of January when I wrote January Spring, which is, of course, not on the RPM album because I did it in January. Found that I thought the arpeggiator was kind of interesting and had the concept of MIDI controlling all of these different settings since it lets you do that. So I had the idea of dueling arpeggiators, and that's where the idea sat until basically today when I actually realized the idea. So let's see, the non-technical version of this thing is I have two different um, arpeggiated instruments, and I decided I would go with two pianos, just keep it clean. So there's a Steinway, and there's a Yamaha. And they have the same chord sequence feeding both of them, and then I basically total with the various parameters on both of them as we go to, to make the song. So that is the non-technical or low technical introduction to dueling arpeggiators. So if you don't like techie stuff, you might just want to stop at this point and get on to the song. Now, from a technical perspective, just getting all the gear working, it's probably the most complicated thing I've done. Let me show you how all this works. Um, in order to control all the different parameters uh, for the arpeggiators in Logic, I used my trigger finger here, which, let me flip it around this way, I actually had sitting in front of me laid out like this going top to bottom instead of sideways, and you can see where I've labeled the different parameters I was going to control. I've actually labeled those with a little uh, sticky so I would be able to tell what to do. So challenge number one, figure out how to make the trigger finger, how to reprogram the trigger finger so I could have the right um, controls doing what I wanted to there. Challenge number zero was figuring out how to use the arpeggiator in the first place. Like I said, I did that in January. So challenge number one was figure out how to get the trigger finger to control the various bits of the arpeggiator. So at this point I've figured out what instruments I'm going to use and I've figured out how to actually make the trigger finger control them. Um, I'll give a little run through in Logic now about how all that's set up. So let's take a look at the Logic setup. Actually, let's start with the trigger finger setup. You program the trigger finger with this Enigma tool. And I copied the default, made a little preset for arpeggiator, and basically had to figure out each of these dials, which of these controllers controlled the different arpeggiator things that I needed to do. And also, what range of controls did they use? Because they don't always go um, 1 to 127. Some of them only have a few different settings. Uh, like that one only has six settings, the one controlling uh, whether you're going up the direction. So I figured that out, programmed the arpeggiator. Most of the fun for this song happens in the environment window. So what I've done is here's a... You need two tracks to run the arpeggiator. Here's the source track it has the chords that will be played and then here's the instrument that will actually the chords will go into the arpeggiator and the arpeggiator drives this Steinway and then here's my second arpeggiator chord source goes to the arpeggiator and drives this Yamaha piano these last two here are just so I can have a final chord to hold it and shut the arpeggiator down and mute that um, right at the end of it, because the arpeggiator kind of just keeps on going uh, whether you want it to or not. So the arpeggiator itself you set up in the environment window here. So you create the arpeggiators and you have to cable them into their various instruments. So here's the settings that you have with the arpeggiator direction, velocity, key limit I didn't mess with. That basically says um, if you're outside that key limit range, it won't arpeggiate. So if you have a split keyboard and you just want to play sometimes and then arpeggiate other times, you can do that. But in this case, I wanted everything. Uh, resolution length, snap to, I didn't mess with. That quantizes to the notes. Um, repeat, I left on, so I didn't have a setting for that. 
uh, octaves crescendo and controller just turns the MIDI control on. So basically I mess with direction, velocity, resolution, length, octaves, and crescendo and played those real time. So my concept is the chords would be preset and my playing would actually be the playing of these six different parameters for each arpeggiator. So having figured that out, and that took me a fair chunk of time, now I need some chords to go behind to arpeggiate. And I could sit here and try and compose all these chords, but I'm really lousy at uh, figuring out chords and this and that. So I hauled out my um, Complete Idiot's Guide to Music Theory, started looking through the chapter on chord progressions in there, found out about leading chords and a nice little table that has what chords uh, lead to what other chords, etc., etc., etc. So I decided how would I, I could sit here and figure out all these chords, but could I generate them randomly? So generating random chords. I've been using Ruby lately for programming, so I went and found a Ruby library uh, called MIDILib that would handle the uh, actual mechanics of dealing with a MIDI file, so I didn't have to mess with that. And they had a from scratch program that basically uh, showed you how to generate, run up the scale, making notes and generating things from scratch. So I started out with their from scratch program and then wrote my own little class here called Chord, and this needed to do two things. I uh, need to be able to give it a key and which position 1 through 7 you're kind of starting your chord on. And it has to also understand right here in the steps between scale notes, it has to understand uh, how many steps there are between, how many half steps between notes so it can figure out which actual chords or which actual notes it's going to have given the uh, base of the chord. So. That's step one, is it has to figure out, okay, chord three is these notes, chord one is these five, these three notes. It also has, I use that leading chord table in here, some concept of, uh, given a chord, which chords can you go to from there? And then it has the logic in here to randomly uh, select the next chord randomly from one of those in the table that appears for the chord that you're at at the moment. And then the other big step here is the part that actually writes the MIDI events for those three notes for the chord. So I encapsulated all of that inside a class. So then the logic down here ends up looking something like this. I had some test code here just to make sure I was generating the right code, right chords. So I started out with um, a C3 tonic chord. And then 20 times through it, I basically... Um, wrote a set of measures. I said right measure here. It's not really a measure. It's actually a set of measures. Um, so I do 20, 20 chord progress, you know, 20 different chords that I progress through there. And having done 20 of those, I want to ultimately bring this thing back to the tonic to finish up. So I tell it, go until you're ready to end. Ready to end basically means the next chord you're going to hit is the tonic chord. So just do however many of those you need to get to the tonic chord and then play that tonic. And the right measure uh, function right here, what that does is get um, a random number of measures between, random even number of measures between 2 and 8. So it picks randomly 1 to 3, or 0 to 3, adds 1 to it to get 1 to 4, and then doubles that. And then it uses a whole length note times that number of measures and then does whatever chord it's supposed to do, and then picks, after that, it picks a new chord in the same key, but off of that table. So it runs through that cycle 20 times, and then it runs through it however many more times it needs to lead into a tonic, and then finishes up with the tonic. So, um, you get that, you run it, and you end up with a MIDI file. That sounds One last word on dual and arpeggiators. I spent so long getting everything set up that when I recorded it, I really only blasted through two passes, two takes, um, once with each piano, you know, kind of tweaked and kind of went as I went. And that's what I ended up with. I may, time permitting, go back through and re-record and uh, try and use a little bit of what I learned and maybe practice a little bit, make it a little bit more artistic and a little less obnoxious. Um, 
So just keep in mind this song may change. Please feel welcome to visit MacIdle.com. That's where I post all my music, and there's lots of other musicians there that have really great stuff. And the best part is most of it's available for free. So please come and check us out.